Welcome once again, Chris McCool, to uh, the Sounds of Jazz, Jazz Live with AJ. And AJ's always happy to have uh, Chris. We've had several good uh, interviews together, and yet we're having another one. And why? Because you're heading to London, and that's May 3, correct? You got it, and we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, and... and and, 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 and the people are only going to have to pay half price because you're only having half the sultans? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Kevin and I, we, uh, we formed the sultans. Uh, I mean, we met about 10 years ago. I guess it's been six years that we've been sultans of string. And, and we're, the, we're the ones who write all the tunes, and we do a lot of touring. Like whenever we're in new markets, like in the States, we're touring a lot as a duo and a trio. Right. Um, we just opened for the... For the Chieftains is a, a trio in Stamford, Connecticut, and, right. and a lot of those kinds of gigs. The nice thing about, um, I mean, I love playing with the full band. It's got that real big kind of world music dance party vibe. But what I love about performing just with Kevin is there's a lot more space as well than, ah. to, hear, than to hear Kevin's incredibly tasty playing. I mean, I think he's the best Roomba Flamenca guitar player or the best guitar player that I've ever played with. And but but uh, it's not a it's 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 a funny thing because it's not really a smaller sound. Um, one thing that um, that uh, audiences will will be able to check out at the London Music Club is is he does a lot of looping on the fly. So he's he's looping parts of the song and then they're playing yeah. back. He's noodling one. Sometimes I take the violin and I start I kick in my octaver pl- pedal and start playing bass lines on it. He's got a, a drum pedal, so it's. It's uh, we we try and sound like about four guys, even though we're just going to be two. <laughs> well, well, I know Chris that that you can accomplish that very easily, you and Kevin. And you're right, Kevin is just awesome to listen to as well. And uh, just when I when all four of you are there, or all two of you, I just get the impression you're having a lot of fun. Well, the thing is, you know, there's nothing life and death about music. If you're not having fun, like I figure, what's the point in playing? But we do have a lot of fun. One one of the things that I like, um, I like about Kevin's playing is he's often, you know, in the sort of, in the sort of jazz vein, he's often quoting other tunes. Sometimes mm-hmm. he, he's making musical jokes with the with the lines he's playing, and and he cracks me up. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of joy in playing, whether we're playing in front of an audience like the London Music Club, or if we're playing with a symphony, or if we're doing education concerts. Um, it's always a lot of fun, and the playing is the best part of the day. I mean, what, what, a, what a lot of people may not realize is just like any job, there's so much kind of paperwork and grunt work to making stuff happen. Yeah. But the one hour or the two hours where I'm, where I'm just playing violin or just playing, you know, playing guitar and singing along is the, is the, it's the best part of my day. I, I just finished a, an education show at a school in Mississauga this morning, and I have another one this afternoon. And <laughs> that's a really great chance to to share some of this music with young people and get them inspired about playing music. Get them thinking about you know going out and buying a a penny whistle or a ukulele and and get started in music so that they can experience that joy. Right. How how long has that been going on, uh, Chris? The uh going into the schools to uh, expose oh, uh, kids to the yeah, music. Yeah, I've been doing that for about 20 years now, and, and uh, I realized that I just missed a 20-year anniversary. I should have made a box set or something of my records, but um, I've got different shows now. I've got one that celebrates the environment, and of course this is Earth Month in April. Next Monday is Earth Day, so that's a big show right now in the schools, and I, yeah. I have another one called Celebrate Holidays of the Global Village, which celebrates Canadian diversity, uh, and that's that's what I perform around, uh, you know, the holiday break time. Yeah. And then we we actually go into schools with uh, Sultans of String. Uh, we call it Fiddle Fire for Younger Grades. Yes. Sultans of String I've, for I've Higher Grades. And, and what's so nice is to be able to share, you know, you really got it right. I mean, we love music, and we love to share that with young people, and I, I feel really blessed to be able to do that because it's... Um, it feels like a great thing to do, you know, get kids excited about picking up musical instruments. Don't be afraid, you know, you don't need an expensive musical instrument. And your your jazz listeners will know that some of the greatest jazz players of all time 
Uh, you know, some of them made their own drum kits. A lot of them never had a music lesson in their life. They just loved music and they made it happen. Exactly. Now, talking about jazz, here's a picture of you and Kev, and you're pictured out in front of Birdland. Oh, that was a really fun show. We, we've got a, a gentleman in the U.S. who's really been rooting for us and helping make a lot of connections. And he set up a showcase for us there in New York City, and we all went down. There was five of us there. Um, and uh, I think Kevin and I were taking a breather, and we thought, hey, let's get a shot in front of the Birdland sign. <laughs> ah, beautiful. I hope yeah. we're going to get a booking there someday, because that's where I used to hang out a lot when I was uh, in my younger days, uh, Birdland. Well, it's to me, it's Mecca. And this is saying something, Ke because, you know, uh, I, Chris, I, I love jazz. I, br I, was, I grew up in jazz in New York, in Montreal. Next door neighbor was Oscar Peterson's sister. And uh, so jazz is always, and now you guys go and get me over. I, I don't want to say to the dark side, but man, your world music it's everything. It's jazz. It's flamenco. It's fun. And you've got a convert. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, one of the things we'd like to do is is actually it's pretty cross genre. Like we, we really love the the I the sense of improvisation and fun that you can have yeah. with, with jazz. Um, we we love the folk tradition and telling stories. Even though a lot of our music is instrumental, we're telling stories through our music. Uh, we love the classical tradition, so that's why we we kind of came up with the the symphony shows and the symphony recording right. we're working on now. And and it's nice because we get to meet people from all walks of life and all across the age brackets. With uh, you know by by taking taking what resonates with us from these different musical traditions and bringing it together. Well, it's fun because I, I come to your concerts and you not only uh, expose us to various cultural differences, uh, values, but you tell it in, with great stories. And I, I think it's the one that really struck me on your CD, Plug Plug, Sultans of String Move, was uh, the uh, one called, is it Josie? Oh, yes, that's written, uh, inspired by the indigenous elder uh, up north. I, for the last bunch of years, I've been a, on the board of directors of ArtScan Circle, yeah. um, and we send teams of artists up to northern communities, um, fly-in indigenous communities, and we bring up um, uh, instruments like uh, everything from harmonicas to, to ukuleles. Uh, people can find out more at artscancircle.ca yeah. about the program. I was doing uh, songwriting workshops um, in the schools in Mishkigogamang in, in high northern Ontario and having lunch each day with this indigenous elder. Her, her name was Josie. And she was telling me how each spring she would take her students out to the bush and teach them how to fish and hunt and trap and set up tents in the middle of the night. And I thought that was pretty amazing for an elder person. Yeah. And then I, it wasn't until the last day that I realized that she was completely blind. Yeah. And then, then I was really blown away by her. You know, like there's a lot. You know, sometimes, sometimes you think that you're going off and you're doing something, and you're maybe through song, you're you're teaching or whatever you're sharing. But but uh, if you keep your eyes and ears open, um, you end up learning a lot more uh, from other people than, than you're bringing to them. <laughs> exactly. So. It, it it really uh, it gives you a, a life's lesson that, uh, gee, don't feel so sorry for yourself. There are a lot of other people out there dealing with worse and dealing with it so admirably, you know? Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, have do you feel the Sultans have arrived? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I think that um, that we've really gelled as a band, and I think that maybe with, with Move that, our third CD there, we really found a sound that, that felt like it was more our own than ever before. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't really, the music business is a really strange, strange place. And, and I, like, I'm not really sure, um, I'm not sure what arrived means in the music business. No. Um, like, I think that, that you can always sort of struggle to get ahead or you can be happy where you are. And I think in a lot of ways I'm 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 super happy because I'm playing music I love with people I love. 
um, you know, we're, we're making ends meet. So it's, that seems pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, I don't think you've arrived yet. I think there's a lot more greatness, uh, in, in each and every one of you, your musicians, the, the collective group, the Sultans, are just amazing, and the talents that they all bring to the stage is uh, there's there's more untapped out there that uh, we're still waiting to hear and listen to, and I know that, <laughs> you're very kind. And, and I know the people who are going to be uh, at the concert on May third. I will be there. Mrs. AJ will be there, and we are looking forward to it and seeing Kevin. And the only other question I have is that the Sultans have gone through quite a transition since the early years uh and i i speak of families my goodness you guys oh, were yeah. young bachelors gay bachelors running over having a wild time well i don't know but i'm just speculating and now you're all well anchored in family affairs it must be tough to get together to record uh it's really tough i mean i think you, you hit the nail on the head when, when i started meeting these guys 10 years ago all of us were single and now we're all married and have children. <laughs> so it is kind of, it is tough to find the time and it makes me really, you know, like with each, with each engagement, I, I question like, is this, is, is it better for me to do this gig or to spend time with my family? And we've been working on the symphony recording for the past couple of years. It's taken a lot of time and, and, but so I've had to kind of fit it in the cracks. I had no idea when I when I was uh, you know when when we were set to have a child just how much time that would take. Holy moly, <laughs> it's a different kind of life. But you know I wouldn't trade that for anything either. Uh, I guess uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty fun, pretty wild time. Well, uh, I, we really look forward to uh, sharing some of that music with folks at the London Music Club May third. And if people want to check out. Um, We've got a website, selfsofstring.com. Right. It's a good place to check out music and, uh, and, and find out more information. And we're going to be promoting the show uh, and uh, giving away some tickets. Uh, Lisa has uh, very graciously uh, gotten some comps out to give away to uh, call-ins. And uh, maybe we'll pick up some CDs because I can tell you my CD of Move is wearing out, baby. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> getting, it's getting thin, and it's great. Uh, so... Uh, and and uh, Kevin's uh, got a project on the go. Have you got one uh, other than the symphony uh, it, things to do? Uh, that's the big one right now. Good. Well, I tell you what, uh, I I don't want to keep you any longer, Chris, because I know you're you're running a safe trip down to uh, London. Look forward to seeing you May three. And, Look forward to seeing you too. And uh, uh, I'll just let you close off. I've got move right here with me. What uh, what uh, piece would you like us to close today's interview with? Uh, well, Road to Kafirmishki is a fun one. It's uh, yeah. it's a bit on the world music side. It um, recounts um, my travel to Kafirmishki, this tiny little village in Lebanon, where yeah. my ancestors are from. Right. And I went there with my father a couple of years ago, and it inspired this song. Okay, well, let's uh, tee it up. And until then, uh, Chris, uh, continued success as always. Look forward to seeing you and Kevin. Uh, extend my love to Amanda. I Will miss do. her. And maybe, okay. And maybe Take you'll care. Bring, and maybe you'll bring some of the kids down to the uh, uh, the hall and uh, have them dancing around. Have some fun. Thanks. Bye now. Bye bye, Chris. <laughs>